Hello, and welcome to another episode of Slay the Spire. We are going to try and get another win today. That would be two in a row, again. Uh, this win that we got yesterday was basically handed to us. <laughs> um, there's not just one answer as to why this win was so easy. Pyramid's always like a nice one to point to, but... Live win lots. I, I mean, I lose lots of pyramid runs. Um, but coffee, coffee dripper, runic pyramid combo is a nice one to point to. Let's get into it though. Let's let's jump into our our attempt at two in a row. Greetings. Choose upgrade a card. 250 gold for just a little bit of max HP is pretty good. It's the Guardian, so a relatively easy Act boss, so we can pick a little bit more aggressively for Act 2. Um, we got this early shop if we want to take the loose at 6 max HP for a bunch of gold. After the chest, um, you can only do one elite, but you can do fire elite fire, which is pretty nice. For the chest, we could do two elites. There are a couple of ways to do it, but one of them involves the four six burning elite, which is pretty scary. We could hit this shop with tons of gold. We could buy some potions. Gosh, we only get two actual fights though. I might be setting ourselves up for failure. Um, still, we can hit a shot before the guardian. So if we want to take the 250 gold and come here and then let's say we hit this shop and we're feeling like we can't do this, then we can duck out. We miss out on two elites that we would otherwise get, but we still get a fire. It's not great to do it that way, but I think it's the best way to take this act. Um, technically, if we duck out soon enough, we can still get one elite in one fire, which would be very good, but it, it would mean we actually just forego the shop until the end of Act 1 altogether, which would not be great. Um, so on turn 1, we weren't attacked and got a bunch of attacks. So we kind of high rolled the order for the first part of the fight, so I don't mind taking it slow, trying to save as much health as possible there. We could have dealt six extra damage in order to give up one of our hit points, but I didn't feel like we needed to, and sure enough, we didn't. Fletchettes. Um, I like Poison Stab a little bit better. I feel like it makes more sense in the Guardian fight. Pretty decent card, all in all. Okay, um... Extra... Gold is good right before this shop. Yeah, let's... Let's, let's grab it, that's awesome. Okay, this part's pretty important. Master of Strategy probably matters a lot. Sneko Skull is also very pickable. Footwork also is very decent. But if we're going to try and fight the Burning Elite... Ah. Maybe Duplication Potion... Needs to be bought. Oh. The only one that really is a problem is Gremlin Knob. If we take ah. Footwork... Flying knee, we can handle the others. Master of Strategy. I think we can do Master of Strategy, Sneko Skull, Footwork, Flying Knee. But then we're like dead to Gremlin Knob.
We could do something a little more weird, like Master of Strategy remove Prepared Abacus. Oh, I mean, it's like trying to build into a very aggressive cycle deck where you actually get to proc the Abacus every turn or something, or multiple times per turn eventually. But that's not the way to play Act 1. I am really liking this flying the massive strategy Sneko Skull footwork. Got one more fight to maybe run away if we have to. This is, it is enough gold for that, right? 158 plus 187 is 345. So this would be, oh, I don't think it is enough. Yeah, it's not enough for the footwork. And the flying knee. 335, um, this would be 364. So then we'd only have 53 left. Which wouldn't be, a, I guess it would be enough for the uh, Blessing of the Forge, which would actually be a decent pickup still. <laughs> This makes my deck. Ooh, 43, not 53. Did the math a little wrong there. This actually makes my deck so much better, though. Bottom deck poison stab is annoying. Nine plus eight gets there though, nice. Ooh, actually it's even ten. Another poison stab? Because of Neko Skull synergy. <coughs> um, if one is good, two is better. That's not necessarily true, but the second poison stab actually does like have more synergy than the first. Better against Gremlin Knob, better against the Guardian, than Blade Dance. Okay, I like it. Two Poison Stabs. Okay, another fight. We actually probably love to see that. Okay, he's buffing, so I absolutely want him dead next turn. There you go. Poison Stab pretty great with Sneko Skull. Well laid plans is phenomenal. Nice, it's a log of We should be able to just crush this. Um we can probably wait until we get um well laid plans set up. This is a pretty decent opening. Next turn's opening just seems terrible, is the problem. So I think we do open now. Um, I think this is mostly fine. Hold on to the master of strategy. Okay, we can use the energy potion here. Oh, well, if I'm going to use the energy potion here, I should actually draw. I didn't think about the fact that the survivor would have to defend, uh, discard the master strategy, so I wouldn't get to hold on to it for the, with the well-laid plans. This is totally fine, and then we'll double block, take only two. 
Oh, we should be able to kill in time. Uh, maybe. Well, not in time to dodge this hit entirely, but the uh, neutralize helps a lot. Okay, so what's the situation here? It's going to take 8, then 7, which is 15, which brings it down to 27. Um, so if I did 12, let's say, then I would need to deal 15. Is that possible? It is possible. 6 plus 10. Let's give it a shot. Um, these defends only block for three, so I miss out on like three or six life here to give myself a chance to win. And we got it because we squeezed in every last strike we could last turn. Super worth it. Ah, oh, this yeah, this is the burning elite. Um, I think part of my calculation was just based off of like 120 hit point log of and I'm like, oh, we should be able to kill in time. And we weren't, but now I'm realizing it's like, oh, well, it was an especially difficult log of Olin. Okay, this is extremely interesting. Corpse Explosion. This Necro Skull makes it better than usual. It's already 7 poison. Nice little AoE solution. Seems really good in this deck with well aid plans. Seems excellent. Gives us a lot of optionality. The gambling chip is huge, by the way. Okay. So 29 life is not enough to survive two hits from Gremlin Knob. So we should absolutely rest. We dodge the elite, but I don't want to dodge the elite. It seems like a rough path anyway, so let's just rest. Hope it's not Gremlin Knob. And then hope we can win anyway. Um, I'll keep a well-laid plans. Okay. This is honestly pretty good. Hold on to a master strategy. Yeah, double poison stab on turn one is very good. Oh, that might have been a mistake. Maybe I was supposed to hold on to, uh... Neutralize. But you know what? I think I should just, uh, draw. He's weak. Nice. That's huge. That's good. That's... Worth it. Hold on to a strike, make sure he's dead next turn. Just take eight, no big deal. He should be dead next turn every time. Uh, no, he's not. So we take some damage here. I would have needed a neutralize or a poison stab. Yep. Oh, we had the extra energy, so it's uh, it's really close, right? Uh, we're two damage off. Ah, oh, that sucks. Here's what it is. We uh, just double block. Saves one life to double block, but that's okay. Go down to twelve, but we got it. Rested, Gremlin Horn is great. Second well laid plans is honestly not bad. With the gambling chip, it's not as important. Um, there is like an actual value to having two well laid plans because holding on to four cards if you upgrade them both every turn is really useful. Like more useful than holding on to just two cards. But there are diminishing returns, right? It's like if you're holding on to two cards per turn, it's mostly good enough. Four cards per turn. 
is not that much better compared to two cards per turn when you think about how much better holding on to two cards per turn is compared to no cards per turn. So the second Molly Plains is definitely worse than the first one. Which isn't saying much. The first one's like one of the best picks you can ever do is adding your first copy of Molly Plains to the deck. But the second one gets this extra benefit of not only can you hold on to four cards per turn, but you are able to see well-laid plans on turn one twice as often, which is a huge deal in a lot of fights. However, with Gambling Chip, if we're going to need well-laid plans on one, like we can find well-laid plans on one about as often as we need to. And it doesn't increase our output. It just kind of slows us down. So I think we skip it for now. We would like... Well, uh, there's... I said if you want to guarantee it on one, there it is. We could just take the blue key, but... I'm happy to have a well laid plans on turn one every... Fight for the rest of the game. Opens up a lot of options. See, but here we might not hold on to it. What are we looking for? Survivor defend. Maybe just one survivor. Instead of saving four life with the defend, we get to double poison stab. To make sure we can kill this reasonably quickly. How hard is this fight? It can be pretty tough. Let's... Do the double poison stab and take four to make sure we can split this turn, which it looks like we need to. So 52 minus 7 is uh, 45, minus 18 is 20 something, so yeah, this splits. It's a decent split. It's not great, but it's good enough. Uh, okay, we have to use the block potion. Yeah, we can't kill. So we go down to five life here. It's very bad. So we have to use the block potion and we still go down to five life. Corpse explosion is what we wanted, that gets us out of the fight. fight another elite if we rest here probably if we take dash especially I don't think we need the deadly poison <coughs> we've got poison stab poison stab corpse explosion I think we want the dash eighteen health twenty uh, it's tough, but we'll give it a shot. Still try and beat sentries. Oh man, this is hard. Dash flying knee is like pretty good. Dash well laid plans is also pretty good. <laughs> if we poison stab corpse explosion. Hmm. 
we deal six and apply seven poison. So it goes down to 33, and then seven and six would be 13, so 20. So neutralized triple strike would kill it. Right. Twenty. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of curious, actually, because dash poison stab does not set up to kill. I guess dash flying knee does, though. Dash flying knee does set up to kill it. Hmm. I kind of like that then. Don't worry about the corpse explosion thing in this fight. Save as much life as possible. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Okay. We don't get to kill it because we bottom decked the strike. Um, but we don't take that much damage here. We block for a bunch. Okay. We get the kill on this guy. Do we want the poison or the weak? Probably the weak, just to save a little bit more life. Saves two life. Oh no, we had an extra energy. Oh, I played that way too fast. That's embarrassing. Look, it cost me five life here. It's really bad. Maybe it doesn't cost any life, because we end up corpse explosioning this. Wow, it, we're actually not punished. Because the fact that we didn't kill this last turn actually saves us at least 5 life this turn, probably more. Very weird. Played way too fast, though. Matryoshka ain't great. Piercing Whale is good. Should probably take it since we haven't picked many block cards. Dash is a block card. Big reason we picked Dash. I didn't mention this. What I was thinking about it was... <coughs> we've picked a lot of attacks in Act 1. Not a lot, I guess just... Literal attack card. Picked 3. Corpse Explosion is a damage card though. So 4. But none of them block. So we've a and we've added one, two, th five, six cards to our deck without any of them being block cards. So grabbing the dashes like now we're like, okay, we're adding block cards to make sure we're going to be okay in Act Two. Another block card, one of the best. Very happy with Piercing Whale here. Okay, now we can afford to upgrade. I think. What do we want to upgrade? Um. Dash is a pretty good upgrade, 6 extra output in one card. We don't really have the energy, you, you notice we're skipping well laid plans a lot just because like we don't have the energy to necessarily take advantage of it yet. Well, Aid Plans Plus helps a lot against the Guardian. So does more Poison in each of these guys. So does Neutralize. I'm a little worried about not splitting in time if I play Well, Aid Plans on turn 1. We've got Liquid Memories. We should be able to split in time. And the question is, can we block every cycle? 
dash on the thorn turn. Dash blocks for 10, but takes 4 damage, so it only really blocks for 6. Hmm. Extending the weak on the neutralize is not as important because we have the well laid plans to hold on to the neutralize for the turns that it will be most important instead of playing it on the turn before it's important because we upgraded it and it lasts for two turns we can just like hold on to it. Hmm, 16 health is not a lot. What is there an upgrade here that? allows me to not have to rest at this fire. We get two upgrades before the Guardian, so it's like, what if I upgrade... Dash and Well Laid Plans? Let's upgrade Dash to start. I like this shop, we have 185 gold. Dolly's Mirror. We don't have any OP cards, right? Dash plus. I don't really want to play. Pay $165 for a dash plus, though. Trip? Meh. This could be just a skip of a shop. Which is too bad. Dolly's Mirror is often amazing, but... Oh, Master of Strategy. Dolly's Mirror, a Master of Strategy. It's very good. It doesn't make me that much stronger against the Guardian, but it's nice to have two Masters of Strategy in the deck. We have so much card draw. Pick up an Energy Relic, feel really good about it. Alternatively, we can take this energy relic, but dash really says that we are not interested in not playing attacks, if that makes sense. It's like our best block card, and it's, atta it's an attack. Kind of a big downside. The extra energy would be nice, but... I don't know, there are a lot of turns where we do like well laid plans block, you know, with you know, or develop poison with corpse explosion. It's very close. I could see Art of War being good, I could see Master of Strategy number two being good. Thought about buying trip. But decided against it because a lot of our damage is in fact poison. We don't need the second master strategy as badly because of gambling chip. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take the second master strategy. We're gonna leave, and then we need to decide, can I beat the guardian if I upgrade well laid plans? Well laid plans helps against the guardian for sure. Does it help enough? I'm gonna try it. Uh, don't want. I don't want to die here. We're gonna try it. We've got this liquid memories we can use to our advantage. Okay. Well laid plans, poison stab, poison stab. Gonna take 8 then 7. That's 15, so we would need to deal... Um, 13 more.
but it blocks for nine, so maybe we would need to, need to deal 21 more. Twenty-two more, right? Uh, twenty-two is actually quite a bit worse because it's out of strike, 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 neutralize range. Not that we even have that at our disposal. This wouldn't do it. Um, so if we hold on to strike, flying the strike neutralize would do it. Hold on to strike and corpse explosion. Let's hold on to strike survivor. Okay, um, we just need to get the other strike, right? We got it. Okay, and then we hold on to a couple of block cards, and then we start blocking through this uh, this shuffle, whatever you want to call it. Getting a poison stab down is pretty good, or a flying knee is not as good because it's not dealing any damage. But we can defend, defend, survive, or poison stab. Take none, develop four more poison. It's pretty good. The downside is that I don't have a way to block next turn. But I can hold on to master strategy, yeah. I think we do want to develop the extra poison. draw enough block cards, we have to try and draw into them. Okay, I think we will... Well, attacking for 16, so if I do this, I'm blocking for 9. I think we don't piercing well. I think we dash, defend... Neutralize is just free damage, assuming I'm going to Piercing Whale next turn. Or alternatively, I save the Piercing Whale even longer, and I Neutralize next turn. Neutralize saves quite a bit of life next turn. We hold on to Neutralize Poison Stab. We take two here. We take two next turn. We could choose to take none this turn. But I want to get the Poison in. Is that wise? We're only at 14 health, so two life saved matters a lot. What's the split math look like this turn, or this cycle? It's at 47, it's going to take 8 this turn, so that puts it down to 39. This would be another 10 next turn, which is... 29, and then another 4 on the following turn, so that's 25. How hard is it to deal 25 damage? Slash 34 damage if we have to get through the block again. Well, I'm holding on to a strike in that world, so that's another 6. So let's say we have to get through the armor. I think we can get there. If not, we still have the liquid memories. Poison stab immediately really helps. Okay, so it's it's done. Oh, I totally miscalculated because there's I didn't count the uh, eight poison that was already on there an additional time. Okay. 
So next turn, I'm not sure what we want to do, but I think we might want to hold on to the block cards for the next cycle. This makes a lot of sense, just load up on poison, give myself extra energy, and then hold on to my two best block cards. We can do Corpse Explosion, Survivor Defend, Corpse Explosion Dash, take one. Well, Dash doesn't, it doesn't do nothing, it like blocks. It blocks for nine. He's attacking for ten. But then I get to hold on to Survivor Defend for next turn. It's pretty nice, just take one. Develop the corpse explosion. Okay, maybe we hold on to the neutralize. Then again, maybe not, because if we're going down to 13, no, we wouldn't be dead ever, even if we miss all the defense. Okay, this is this is like free. We just we just win the fight from here. Probably want to hold on to these. Yeah, fight's over. Okay. Super rewarded for upgrading that well aid plans. Um this blocks out and then it's dead. even got to save the liquid memories. Okay, we were a lot stronger against Guardian than I thought. I think a big part of that is upgrading well-laid plans. I think upgrading well-laid plans made me way better against the Guardian than I expected it to. Alchemize, <laughs> it's a classic. In my last run, I took Alchemize and then it was the worst card in my deck because immediately afterwards, I got a Fairy in the Bottle and a Ghost in the Jar and then never needed to use them the whole run until the heart. But I won, right? It's like the run where Alchemize was the worst card in my deck was the easiest win of my life. So that's not actually a reason to not pick Alchemize. Alchemize helps in the runs where it's not very easy to win. Phantasmal Killer is okay, but we're doing some poison stuff, and Corpse Explosion helps with the AoE fights. Did we pick up Quirks, Corpse Explosion before or after the Gremlin Horn? I think it was after. Corpse Explosion is a lot worse with Gremlin Horn, because... The extra card draw and energy from Gremlin Horn when you kill the first enemy makes it a lot easier to just get the rest of the enemies after that without needing to like cheese them away with Corpse Explosion. But Corpse Explosion helps in some specific fights like Donu versus Dekka or the birds that Gremlin Horn wouldn't solve easily. Anyway, I do think this is an Alchemize. And I do think this is a coffee dripper. Could be a sacred bark, but probably coffee dripper. We've got two masters of strategy. Yeah, the energy goes so far compared to typical decks. We really, really need the energy. I would take a tactician, but that doesn't like negate the value of the coffee dripper here. Okay, we do only go up to 48 health because we ended Act 1 without a ton of life, and we're unable to heal that back up. We lost some missing HP in the form of not having 66 max HP, leaving the Act as well. How strong are we? Um, in theory, Slavers is an easy fight, because 
we get to corpse explosion them all away, so we just have to be able to kill one of them. In theory, uh, focus stabbing is pretty easy because we can hold on to piercing well with the wellhead plan, stack up our poison, slip away. We can do two elites after the chest if we do these two. Or these two. If we want a bunch of question marks. I kind of like that, and then we can come here, and then see if we want to do two elites before the fight, no elites, or no, two elites before the chest, no elites before the chest, or a fire and an elite before the chest. I like that a lot. This right side of elite, fire, elite, elite is just bait. It's only three elites, but they're all front loaded. Much worse than taking the elite way back here. Here's the birds I brought up. Okay, I don't think we need the well laid plans. Survivor is good. Don't need the alchemize. Nice, we got the neutralize. One, two, three, it gets knocked down, we block out the other one, and then Corpse Explosion kills everyone. Ah, uh, we can't hold on because we didn't play the well-laid plans or the alchemize. I want, uh, I mean... Alchemize wouldn't help us hold on, but Alchemize is the card that we kind of want to hold on for. Yeah, we definitely misplayed this. We could have gotten the Alchemize played. I was too worried about this fight. This fight was much easier than I was giving it credit for. Don't think we need these. Cloak and Dagger is okay. If I want more ways to just simply block. Locks more than a defend. I'll skip for now. I'll pick it up. I would pick it up maybe in this card reward. It feels a little bit arbitrary, but there's good reason behind it. Okay, there's the dash, which is great. Well laid plans, defend. Hold on to these two. We're going to take a little bit here, and that's okay. Take three. We're going to hold on to the Master of Strategy. We have an extra energy next turn. So we're going to use it. Nice, dash is good. Hold on to these two. Corpse Explosion is pretty bad in this fight, it's a single enemy fight. Okay, we can block out now. Um, let's use the Alchemize since the attack doesn't get through any armor. And then hold on to flying the Master of Strategy. It looks like we might need a card draw next turn. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and grab the Piercing Whale. And it should be dead next turn. Okay, great fight. Kind of showing you the power of this deck. We 
We're offered a potion now. It's probably worse than either of the potions up here. Flying knee plus? It's like weirdly kind of good. Uh, I think we don't need it. If we didn't have this flying knee already, I'd feel better about it, but I don't think we need two flying knees in the deck. Don't think we need the acrobatics with the two masters of strategy. Okay, this is extremely interesting. Hard part about corpse or uh, ritual dagger is like corpse explosion might fight a little bit with it. Poison in general can make it a little bit trickier than normal to land the ritual dagger. However, I think it's very good. I think this is a ritual dagger pick. Okay, the other consideration is we can't rest this act. So. We need to be very careful. Taking six damage here is pretty expensive because we can't just heal that back. Um, I think we definitely don't do the double elites. I could see a hallway fight suddenly just being a nightmare for us. There are some really hard hallway fights out there. Avocado Rat. Cultist Chosen, probably not so bad. Snake plant. Brutal. Snake plant and avocado rat are the ones I'm most scared of. Cultist chosen is pretty bad too, actually. Act two hallways are just really hard. So I'm afraid that if we take this, you know, six damage isn't good. But then also we're gonna get ourselves in these really difficult hallway fights that will make it difficult to land the ritual dagger. On the other hand, Ritual Dagger makes the hallway fights easier. One energy deal 15 is pretty nice. For 6 HP, we go down to 39. We've got two potions. Let's go ahead and stay in line. Okay, match and keep. Don't think I want either of those. I absolutely want an adrenaline. Yes, that's amazing. Free Adrenaline is insane. Best match and keep I've had in a long time. Okay, we just got more powerful. Ritual Dagger and Adrenaline both make us more powerful. We've got two potions. Do we go for two elites? What question marks would I take? Would I take Bites? Maybe. Bites is good, right? I love Bites. I would 100% take Bites. With the Coffee Dripper, we can't get our health back any other way. Okay, would I take Apparitions? Maybe. Probably. Okay, so I guess I'm team question mark. It's Bird plus Chosen. Is it possible to kill this bird? Everything does half, so this would only deal seven. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's possible to kill with the ritual dagger. Okay, I think what we want to do is corpse explosion the bird. Still didn't find it.
We can kill the bird right now with Ritual Dagger, but I would rather... Corpse Explosion it. on to these two. We're going to use Ritual Dagger to kill Chosen. Corpse Explosion to kill this guy. Blocks out. Uh, let's see. Cultist is going to take 26 from the explosion, so we would still need to deal 53. Not even close to being able to deal 53. We can liquid memory to get the dash back, so we can block next turn. We like get the dash back, but we don't play, we just hold on to it. Which means we lose out on the benefit of the discount from the Liquid Memories, but we can't do it next turn since we're shuffling and we only get two draws next turn, and Chosen's attacking for like as much as, what, like 28 or something crazy? We get to block for 10, but it's not very good. Oh, alternatively we get... Th yeah, 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 yeah. We Liquid Memories to get the uh, Corpse Explosion back. We Corpse Explosion the bird again. So now it's going to deal 52 to the Chosen, and then we would only need to get 21 damage, which we could do for sure. Yeah. This is much better. Oh, I forgot about the uh, Gremlin Horn. I don't think it really mattered in our calculations there. Let's get a potion back. Kill with Ritual Dagger. Okay. Pretty solid. Um, Fletchettes. We have a full hand a lot of the time. And quite a few attacks. I could see us picking up a Fletchettes. With the Adrenaline Double Master strategy. It's a lot of skills that we can get into our hand. Okay, we got like a pretty good potion for this elite fight. Gremlin Leader, oddly, I think is the hardest one. Our deck is not great at dealing with small minions. But Corpse Explosion can help. Not easy to block though. I feel like all of the elites are going to be hard. I don't know, we just kind of crushed that fight, but we used two potions on it. We don't, we, we don't block well enough. I'm gonna I'm gonna do fewer elite fights. We're gonna come here and we're gonna upgrade. Lots of good upgrades. Ritual dagger might be the best though, if we can get away with it. Two more damage per proc. <laughs> this gremlin, first he does match and keep and now he's having us spin the wheel. No uh, screw you I guess the gremlin give it the gremlin take it away. Give us an adrenaline and then he gave us a decay.
I was gonna say, with the gambling chip, it's not the end of the world. Uh, three, six, seven, so this draws up to full. Okay. Definitely like getting the poison down. I definitely like full blocking, so let's do that. Hold on to these two. So we can full block next turn if we need to. We don't need to. Um, how easy is it to kill it next turn with Ritual Dagger? Not easy at all. So we're going to hold on to Dash Piercing Well. Wait until next cycle to get the uh, Ritual Dagger. This is good. Uh, we would take six in this world. I think I'd probably rather to just take none with piercing now. And then just try and kill it next turn with a fire potion, maybe. Hopefully with ritual dagger. Nice, we got the ritual dagger. But I do think we need to use a fire potion to land the ritual dagger, which I think is worth it. Just because of the ma malleable and the poison, meaning that if we're trying to kill with ritual dagger, the 12 poison doesn't actually do anything. So we'd have to deal 15, which we can't. Yeah, so we're just going to use a fire potion to ritual dagger this guy. And we get a potion back, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Bouncing flask is kind of cool because of Sneko skull. I don't know if it's what we really need, though. I think it's not. I think it's not what we need. We just picked up a Fleshette, which is kind of like filling in for Bouncing Flask as an uncommon damage card. Tiny Chest, and Pear is not that good if we can't rest. Do we want the Tiny Chest? Probably. Ten hit points, but we can't ever rest. I think we can key the pair. Okay, here comes an elite. This looks pretty good, honestly. Master strategy again. Okay, here's the corpse explosion. Okay, yeah, we can use the fire potion to just do this all right away. So this is 23, so we need to just do a little bit more like this. Now it kills all of these guys. Um, take two, I guess. This was not done correctly. We could have taken taken none if we'd attacked the front one, which would have killed the back one, which would have saved us an energy, so we wouldn't have to have stricken the front one like we just did. So we take two extra damage here and we cry about it, but oh well. Get a sundial. I thought about Grand Finale as we were coming into the end of Act 1. I was like, oh, Grand Finale gets... It's, it's when we were um, Dolly's mirroring on the Master of Strategy. I was like, oh, Grand Finale gets so good because we with with the uh, gambling chip and the double Master of Strategy, we can just like draw through to the end of our deck on turn 1 sometimes, which isn't actually true, but like, definitely by turn 2 it feels like pretty reasonable to accomplish. 
now that our damage is like fleshing out with the ritual dagger we picked up a flechettes we also still have the poison thing going um, master strategy is like way less exciting as a way to try and win the late game it would have been pretty good in act two because it like clears most act two fights like the slavers right if you can just land grand finale but we just finished the slavers we're more than halfway done with act two as we get into act three it's like it's pretty underwhelming so i think it's no more on the grand finale piercing whale number two though i'm very excited about we just need more better ways to block and piercing whale helps us okay i kind of want more question marks uh for the tiny chest the surprise shop is not what i was hoping for but Maybe not such a bad thing. Orange pellets. We only have the one power and it's on guaranteed to be in our opening hand. Which could be good or bad for orange pellets reasons. There are a lot of powers that would be good though. I would still like a footwork probably. Um, would I take a caltrops? Eh, probably not. Still, this is a way to deal with the uh, heart debuff. We can actually use well laid plans to hold on to a power to make sure we can make ourselves not vulnerable. I'm, I'm kind of really liking it. Nothing else here seems to matter that much. Dealing with the heart vulnerable is something that we need to do if we're going to win, I think. <laughs> Hello, Naloth. Gosh, I really would like to see rares more often. Um... But these are not give upable. Dolly's mirror would have, um, and sundial, and tiny chest would have been uh, giveable. But ring of the snake, your starter relic, absolutely not. Bottle tornado, probably not. You could see us getting rid of bottle tornado. Nah, I like bottle tornado too much. Sorry, Nala. Okay, we got two potions. They're pretty good for whatever the elite is. Let's let's just fight the elite. Get rid of everything because those cards kind of suck. Okay, do we want to Piercing Whale? Um, we can almost block out. We would take two. If we dash defend, the Decay would deal two to us. And I think that's a cool. Hold on to the Corpse Explosion and the Alchemize. She's summoning. That's a guarantee this turn. 16 damage. I thought about saving the corpse explosion to deal with like the minions here that pop out. But I think in reality I just want to kill in the next couple of turns. Let's use the distilled chaos. 
Okay, we'll do this to uh, make sure we don't get weakened. Also draws a card. It's going to be hard to uh, Ritual Dagger next turn. She may or may not be attacking. I think we end turn... Let me hold on to... Oh, dang it. Took two extra damage that we didn't need to. That was so dumb. I just didn't play the card that had energy for because I thought we were blocked out. Okay, perfect. She's not attacking, though, so that's pretty lucky. Um, we do need to double defend. But then we just flying the strike, and she's dead to uh, Ritual Dagger next turn, probably. Maybe not. But she's not even attacking, so it's fine. Um, but can we kill her? This would be... So this is 28, so we need to deal only 13 more damage. So, yeah. We got her. Okay. Took a bunch of extra damage there, which is sad. Um, Fletchette's number 2 I don't want. Die, die, die. I don't think we need. Hello, Sneko. Let's toss all these. Well, it plans is great. Master of strategy number two is fine. Poison stab is good. Flying D is great. Strike and then hold on to neutralize dash. Not a great turn one. We only got one poison card put down. Um, but we get to block out here, which is great. Technically we take two because of this dang decay. This decay is really starting to upset me. Thirty-three damage? Dang it. Um... It's not enough, and it's choosing to deal attack for 18 instead of 7, which is the other amount it can attack for. Which is way, way, way less, so we need to look for something to help us out here. Deep breath, I guess, to look for... something. Do we have a kill? I feel like it's so close. 33... plus 8... is... 41. This would be 10, so that's 51. Yeah, we do have a kill, thank goodness. It, it doesn't proc Ritual Dagger, but it means we don't have to take 13 damage here. Doesn't matter. Didn't get to play Alchemize either, but that's because Sneko just made Alchemize cost three. There's nothing you can do about that. Cloak and Dagger plus. I'd be okay with that. Okay, what do we upgrade here? Adrenaline's a good upgrade. We're still pretty needy on energy. Neutralize is a good upgrade. Poison Stab's a good upgrade. Alchemize is a good upgrade. Corpse Explosion is okay. A Poison Stab is probably better. Flechettes is a good upgrade. I'm gonna upgrade the Neutralize. Maybe hold on to the flying knee. Nice, this is a great turn. Get 
people with poison stabs down, hold on to the corpse explosion to use on these guys. can't quite kill it this turn, but we can block for a bunch. <laughs> I say a bunch, we still take, jeez louise, seven damage here. Not an easy fight. Okay, dash is good. We get to draw two cards, get a bunch of extra energy. Alchemize. Maybe we want to use this power potion. Mm, we probably want to use it after she debuffs us. That's really smart. And then use the uh, orange pellets to clear the debuffs. Let's just do a real simple turn here. Play through our basic cards. She's debuffing this turn. Cool. Hold on to these. We're going to use the power potion to get rid of these debuffs. She's not attacking. Which is generally pretty good. Um, we'll take an after image. Could take a wraith form, but... Maybe we should take a wraith form. She's uh, buffing here, so she's going to be coming in for... Oh, how much is it? Does she give them six extra attack? What is it? Three extra strength. So she's going to be attacking for... She could be summoning. Let's just take the after image. Oh, we need to play a skill. I was like trying to figure out if we could save the cloak and dagger for next turn since it'll block next turn. We don't need to block this turn. She's only attacking for 19, so we can actually block that out pretty easily. Defend event survivor blocks that out. Corpse Explosion, Defend Survivor does not. So we'll just defend, defend Survivor. Hold on to these. Cool, she's buffing again, so we have time to weave in maximum damage here. And now we're going to try and kill her next turn, maybe? Maybe I should have held on to the Piercing Well. Ah, she's not even attacking, so we good. We're golden. Um, she should be dead next turn. To, dead to the ritual dagger, specifically, which is really nice. Power potion's back. Adrenaline is here. Malaise is here. Oh, man. Which is better, adrenaline or malaise? We already have an Adrenaline. We also already have a bunch of ways to spend our energy really effectively without the malaise. The malaise helps so much though in a lot of fights. We can take another energy relic here and be really happy about the malaise. Philosopher's Stone would make the malaise... Um, I guess the malaise would make the Philosopher's Stone more of a free boss relic pick. Super nice. Um, optionality. I think I've mentioned this before, but it's not always about making your deck more powerful. Sometimes it's about making sure your deck can solve more different kinds of problems. Adrenaline makes us more powerful. Maybe it even makes us more powerful than malaise makes us more powerful. But malaise solves problems in a way that nothing else does. It gives us way more optionality in certain fights. We have a lot more avenues to get out of fights using the malaise strategy compared to adrenaline, which just helps us do more of the same thing better. It helps us do it way better. More card draw, more energy. It's so good. But 
optionality. I like it. <laughs> uh, runic pyramid is not super necessary with a bottled well laid plans. And the energy would be nice. We don't have a straightforward energy relic here, but Slaver's Collar is probably good enough. Five energy in boss and elite fights is going to be really nice. And then in hallway fights, hopefully they're easy enough that we get through anyway, because Ritual Dagger is very powerful in hallway fights. Yeah, I think it's Slaver's Collar. No must, no fuss. It's gonna be free energy. No downside. All right, I'm really glad this isn't Busted Crown or Choker. Way better than those. So what do we want to do this act? Um, we can do Fire Elite Fire, or Fire Elite Fire, or Elite Elite before the chest. So lots of options before the chest. After the chest, Double Elite is the most Elite path we can do, or Fire Elite, Fire Elite. If we just want to get two nodes. Lots of hallway fights. Lots of hallway fights after the chest. The only question marks are on paths that we're absolutely not going to. We could put this question mark maybe, but no. Okay, so what does that mean for us? Um, question marks are pretty good with tiny chests. But we can get three question marks either way here. So it's just do we want to go left or right? We want to go right for sure. Okay, this is an easy fire elite, fire, fire elite. That's what I'm thinking. Um, what do we want to throw away? Maybe this. Ooh, corpse explosion is good. We can Piercing Whale and Floating Dagger. Okay, we didn't play Well-Aid Plans, but that's okay. It means that we get to kill this next turn, which kills everything else. Well, it doesn't kill the spiker, but that's okay. Now we want to try and kill the spiker with the ritual dagger. I just need one more defend. Come on, there we go. Take none. The ritual dagger procs up to 43. We're offered to deflect. It's decent. Don't think we need it. I'm gonna say no. What's Donu Deca? It's okay against Donu Deca. <clears throat> Donu Deca should be easier than normal because we have a corpse explosion. So I'm gonna skip. It's pretty good. This guy's buffing, I would like to kill him. Okay, don't really need to hold on to uh, basic cards. I could have played a strike there and held on to the uh, adrenaline, but I could just play the adrenaline instead. Okay, none of them are multi attacking. We do have a piercing whale here. Corpse Explosion on this one, and then Ritual Dagger on the only one that survives that. So I want to deal maximum damage to this one so that uh, we can kill it next turn without having to rely on poison to kill it. Uh, 
So how much am I willing to, to pay for this ritual dagger proc? Well, I definitely pay a weak potion. So I, th I think what we do is we do neutralize, so it's dead. Double defend. We pay a uh, weakness potion and two life. But it means we now get to just... Uh... It was a little unlucky that they were all attacking two turns in a row there. It means we get the ritual dagger proc here. <coughs> if you didn't know, ritual dagger doesn't proc in, uh, on the darklings except on the last darkling. Um, don't need concentrate. Our energy situation has been mostly fine. I guess concentrate malaise is kind of a synergy, but uh, I could talk myself into concentrate here, actually, with all this card draw still, and then we could pick up like a reflex. And it gives me a way to really pour into malaise for like time eater or chosen one to concentrate plus if it's not going to be good in the fight we can just get rid of it with a uh, gambling chip oh gee thanks darkstone parry app oh my gosh this guy the wheel is back <laughs> are you going to give me another curse that would be funny since i just picked up the darkstone parry app. i was really thinking like oh i wish i'd gotten the darkstone parry app before the wheel last act Wow, he gives me a relic instead. Thank you, sir. This gremlin. I don't remember the last... Ooh, kunai. I don't remember the last time I saw uh, three gremlins in one run. I guess the lore is that it's the same gremlin every time. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, how are we supposed to do this? I don't know. I hit him so he's easier to make sure he's dead to corpse explosion. Uh oh. I think this is mostly fine. I think what's going to happen is we're just going to use our, our block potion. We take two here. It's not great. No, we take one. I mean, it's still not great, but it's acceptable, I guess. Well, we can't afford to flush at the spiker. So we'll flush at here. Cloak and dagger. Blocks for a bunch. We take three. No, we take four. Oof, not great. But not the end of the world. Three, six, seven, okay. Um, oh, how close are we to killing him? He's at 55. So, poison stab, strike. He's dead. Corpse explosion. And then, just, just for proof of concept, you get to see our malaise do work here. Five less strength, so he can hardly attack us at all. We can hardly attack him at all, though. Okay, not a terrible fight. We lost, what, like five life? Um, yeah, we will do it this way. Now he's dead next turn. Okay. Can't really set up Pendant better than that. Liquid Memories, um, or Duplication Potion. They're so similar, but Duplication Potion is 
better with malaise. Or ritual dagger, so duplication potion is better, I guess. Okay, let's go ahead and take the key here. I don't know what we want to upgrade yet. Let's see how this fight goes. This can be a tough fight for sure. I'm gonna toss everything looking for... Ooh, not that. No, not that. That's really bad. Oh no. We don't even have a kill on one of them. 19 damage. Oh no. Okay, it's not the end of the world because double piercing whale can save us next turn, but in a perfect world we draw... Not that. In a perfect world we were going to draw... Uh, what's it called? Corpse Explosion. Corpse Explosion would be insane here. Um, but we don't get Corpse Explosion, we get this... Trash. We gotta kill you. Oh great, thanks for the defend. Probably we're going to use Duplication Potion on a Piercing Whale then. Oh my gosh, with Pen Nib, I didn't even think about Ritual Dagger. But we totally could have killed her. No, we couldn't have, even with the Pen Nib. Okay, don't take any damage here. Hopefully, we get Corpse Explosion now. Do not. Corpse ex oh, Corpse Explosion, both Masters of Strategy, bottom four. That's okay, we can still... We can still get there, actually. So it's like... Well, let's see what this alchemize is. Let's see what this colorless potion is. Hand of Greed? Okay. Kill you. Three, six, seven. Definitely want a corpse explosion here. And then we need to start blocking because she's atta she's attacking for 34. Oh my gosh. Three, six, seven. Come on, neutralize. No. Okay, we're gonna do this to look for another card. Okay, we get hit really hard here. 15 damage. Sucks. No, 19 damage. Oof. Oh, and now we're just dead, because we are drawing all the wounds now. We're not literally dead, but... I mean, we don't have that many wounds in our deck. We have four wounds in our deck. I drew three of them, and a, two strikes. Instead of dashed, cloak and dagger, malaise, neutralize, survivor, the other defend. Mm. 
wow, this fight went really, really badly. And now we can't kill the daggers in time. Like, we can make her less powerful next turn, but we're just getting destroyed here. Oh, and of course we draw two wounds off the top. My deck is not mostly wounds, despite what the game is trying to make you think. Okay, well this is going to deal 26 damage. So we can kill the back one. And then we just draw another wound. Are you kidding me? Yeah, we're just, we're just dead. I probably could have played this fight better, but absolutely, this this draw order was really, really unlucky. Um. I was, I, I was, it's a little matter of playing too fast. It's not necessarily a matter of like distracted. Like I'm not f quite at the point where I'd be fatigued. I've mentioned before that my gameplay gets pretty questionable in Act 3 because I'm a little fatigued. But I don't think I'm there yet. I was definitely going to take a break before the boss gauntlet. But I feel very fresh right now. Um, I just... There are times when you need to play really slowly to not mess up and there are times when you can get away with not needing to play quite so slowly or at least where I can get away with not needing to play slowly and for the most part this deck felt like it was in a little bit of kind of an autopilot situation where it's like yeah we're very powerful we've got lots of tools at our disposal we mostly get to do the same thing same things every fight um, and they work in every fight and in this fight the same things do not work because this is a tricky fight there's a lot there's a lot going on here. And there are a lot of ways to try and get out of this differently. Landing Pennib on the ritual dagger and rushing down the uh, and rushing down the Reptomancer. I don't know if that would have worked because we don't have any vulnerable, so doubling the ritual dagger is only 106 damage, which is a lot, but I don't know how we deal the other ninety-one damage if we're without dying on turn three, since we wouldn't be killing the... or dying on turn two, right? Yeah, we'd die on turn two. She'd be attacking for 100 on turn two, if we're not trying to clear out the daggers. So that that's one way that it feels like we might have misplayed, that because we didn't think very hard about it, when in reality, like if we go back and we think very hard about it, I don't think there's a way that that saves us, okay? Then the other way that we misplayed is we could have used potions sooner, that probably would have made it so we could have gotten out of the fight, but this fight was always going to go poorly. And the reason why was because we bottom decked, Corpse Explosion, Master of Strategy, Master of Strategy. Um, just, I'm, I'm going to end the run here. Sometimes in the past I've liked to save and quit and just limp on. We're not going to do that here, but I am going to just proof of concept. I tossed the Cloak and Dagger last time, I'm going to keep it this time. So if we look at what we're dealing with, we know that these three are on the bottom right now, but we wouldn't have known that before. So in this situation, it's like, okay, I need to try and kill these daggers this turn. So 13 plus 8 is 21, 13 plus 10 is 23, so we can overkill either of them. Let's go for this one because it uses less uh, energy, so we have more information when we draw this card. It's like, oh, we just drew a defend, that's not very good. And that, like, maybe now we feel like we're in trouble. 
So now we drink the potion. We could have drank it in the potion before. We'll just drink it now. Ah, the Wraith form is really good. I think we're going to want the Wraith form. Not this turn, though. We're going to do something like this. She has to be attacking this turn, so we're going to intentionally just Wraith form this. Survivor. I don't think we need to concentrate. And we do need to play an attack. We do still want to kill these guys. So we'll do the attack like this. Wraith Form's debuff wears off. Okay, this is now dead at the end of next turn, which isn't great. We'd still love to see any of our more powerful cards, but they're all at the bottom. We're still missing Corpse Explosion Master of Strategy. If we draw for them, we're still missing them. Okay, these guys are killing themselves, so it doesn't actually matter what we do here. I guess seeing the extra card draw from here is nice, but we still are missing Master of Strategy Corpse Explosion. We don't need to panic with the colorless potion, so we probably should not. Could hold on to the ritual dagger. Um, she's attacking for a bunch, but we should be able to stop that. Or we could kill her with potentially a duplication potion ritual dagger if we could play uh, four attacks which is unclear right now yeah we can so we, we can actually get out of this fight like this then we play cloak and dagger shiv shiv and then we duplication potion ritual dagger and that will kill her with a Ritual Dagger proc. So, even with terrible draw order, this fight is actually really winnable. We're like way ahead in this fight, but we, we do have to slow down and play very carefully to respond to the draw order being bad. Um, and we just didn't do that. Should I just continue this run? for the sake of the content. I think I will. I think I will, but let me know in the comments if rather uh, not. I don't know. I don't know why you would rather not see it since I'm not streaming. But if you would rather me just like not post, if, if you like, if I have a run that loses in Act 3, would you rather just like not see it and wait until you see an, a, an actual win? I don't know. We'll just keep going though. Dodge and Roll Plus is kind of cool, but not super necessary. hard to get my bearings again after having to save and quit out. It's like, oh, what's our deck bad at? It's like, we're getting a lot of incorrect signals as to why how our, how our deck is currently weak. Like, oh no, like we have way too many filter cards. Like, uh, yeah, we haven't removed any strikes in the fence, and we have this extra curse. So it feels like, oh, our deck is like really inconsistent. So maybe we don't want to add like, or maybe we do want to add like a bridge the gap type of card. Just a little bit extra block. But it's like, then we have more filler cards in our deck that aren't helping us do the main thing, like with Corpse Explosion, maybe Malaise, Piercing Whale, stuff. In reality, our deck is not that inconsistent. We have two Masters of Strategies and an Adrenaline, which is a lot of extra card draw. But sometimes 
And, and you know, Gremlin Horn is extra card draw, and Gambling Chip, huge consistency buff. But for Master Strategy, Master Strategy, and Corpse Explosion to be bottom three, <laughs> it's astronomically low. We shouldn't make deck building decisions around that possibility. Anyway, it, I'm having a hard time figuring out what the correct way to evaluate what our deck needs is right now, so I'm just going to go a little bit more quickly and say we don't need the dodge and roll. I think it was great. Giant head. Definitely want this. Definitely want to get these down. Get, getting kunai prox is good. Just getting the malays out of here <coughs> is also pretty good. Ah, but the concentrate malaise is something we could have waited around for. A little bit of weird ordering there, but oh well. Deadly Poison's good. Lachette's. Alchemize. Deadly Poison. Piercing Will is not as good as my block cards. Defend. Defend. Cloak and Dagger. Shiv. Shiv. Cloak and Dagger. Shiv, Ritual Dagger, Survivor, and take a little bit of damage. Could have taken less if I had done it in a better order. Now it's looking pretty bad, but good instincts helps. Strike, strike, dash. Strike, strike, flechettes, dash. Strike, strike, flechettes. Dash, good instincts. Take another bunch of damage. Kind of just, <laughs> I don't know, part of me is hoping we just lose here. I've definitely lost my motivation after getting beat up and having to save and quit against a fight that was totally winnable. Um, it looks like we're kind of dead here. Well, neutralize helps a lot. But now we're just dead next turn. It makes sense that this is a hard fight for us, harder than Reptomancer. And... Now we are dead. And it feels a lot more like there wasn't really a clean way out of that fight. Extra malaise would have helped, for sure. Um, but I don't think it would have solved the fight. Um, our damage output was way too low, right? That's what it kind of comes down to. Our ritual dagger only scales up to 58 by this point in the game. And Act 3 elites have hundreds of health. Uh, 200 health in the case of Reptomancer, like 500 health in the case of Giant Head. So, um, we can't kill either of them fast enough. Um, another problem was like, oh, we kind of have this like poison scaling damage, which makes it feel like you can deal 500 damage, because it's like, oh, we beat the Act Two boss, like we cleared Collector, but Collector doesn't deal 40 damage a turn. Uh, 
Um, and she even like ramps up slower. Uh, as she she deals damage faster than Giant Head, but she starts dealing scary damage much slower than Giant Head. And so you have so much time to just let these poison stacks proc for like 15 turns. I don't know how long the collector fight was. We can go look at it. But in Giant Head, it's like on turn four, it's like, hey, yeah, your poison has dealt like 100 damage to Giant Head. Like, sucks to be you. Okay, the collector was only nine turns. A little bit faster than I thought, but still, Giant Head killed us in seven turns. Like, we can't wait nine turns in the Giant Head fight. And then the other thing is, Giant Head has actually, you know, 500 plus HP. I'm comparing it to Collector, but Collector only has 300 ish HP. Like, a little, only a little bit more than half of what the Giant Head has. So we didn't we didn't have the damage we needed. Um, ways to have gotten the damage we needed, like maybe another poison card, like bouncing flask, right? I remember we talked. I I saw bouncing flask. I'm like, oh, it's like a synergy with snuggle skull, but it's not what the deck needs right now. That might have been absolutely a thousand percent false. Seven turns isn't like a long time to sit around in the elite fight, but if we did Bouncing Flask on one for seven turns. Do you know how much damage that is? That's uh, 84 damage. Like, that's actually a pretty big deal. In fact, I don't remember seeing what it was, but we were close to that amount of damage off against Giant Head. Uh, fan... Phantasmal Killer instead of the Alchemize. Uh, probably not the right pick, but that type, I think we, we passed up another Phantasmal Killer here, right? Phantasmal Killer instead of Malaise, maybe. Because we were just too slow on damage. We were deceptively too slow. Because Ritual Dagger makes you feel like you're really fast on damage, but it's a one-time use. The Pendib helps a lot, though. It's surprising that the rest of our deck's damage was so bad. But it makes sense, right? We, we stopped pitch picking damage cards after... Uh, piercing, uh, poison Stab, Poison Stab. Corpse Explosion. We just like thought that was enough. A single flying knee, cloak and dagger is hardly an attack card. Right, we skipped a dagger throw. Like maybe we needed to pick a dagger throw. He draws a card. We'd have five energy in the elite fights. That honestly would have helped a lot against Reptomancer too, right? It's like killing the daggers was super hard. Wouldn't have helped so much in Giant Head. Giant Head's a really hard fight for a deck like this. Of course, like, Catalyst would have been nice, but we weren't offered any Catalysts. Nightmare um, could get us out of a lot of situations like that. Maybe Nightmare Malaise. Dash. I don't know. Very interesting run. It, it's hard to say exactly what went wrong. I'm, I'm speculating here. It might have been a damage problem and I'm identifying certain things we could have done differently, but it's it's hard to know. Like, the Dolly's Mirror on the... Master of Strategy might have been like a really suspicious pick. Without the cards that we really want to cycle into. Right, we had no powerhouse of cards, necessarily. I don't know, the Ritual Dagger... This feels like a good decision. Hard run, I appreciate you watching. Let me know what your thoughts are on what we could have done differently. Um, I like these to be not just teaching opportunities, but learning opportunities, of course. 
Another death in Act 3, though, I think is ultimately a good thing for... Supposing that our play is... is Making it through Act 2 and being relatively powerful, I think it's a very good thing for... It bodes well for, for the level of play that we are holding ourselves to. Could have been a pathing issue, right? Maybe we could have known that we were especially bad at uh, Act 3 Elites. Already had the green key, so maybe we're supposed to not pad into too many Elites back-to-back -back after each other like this. It makes sense that we're bad against Act 3 Elites, I think. Again, just for the same reason, knowing that Ritual Dagger is an outlier of... a, a power outlier that is not an, enough of an outlier, like not powerful enough to get through the huge health pools on these elites. Gets through like all the hallway fights fine though, right? Like we just hallway it up all through Act 3. And then against the boss fights, you know, we've curated the potions we need with uh, Alchemize. That's another big thing that's like a clear misplay in this run, is panicking with potions. I don't know. Like, we used two potions in Reptomancer, two very powerful potions. Maybe we needed to since we lost the Reptomancer fight to begin with. Um, but if we take all hallway fights, then we have time to use uh, Alchemize to curate the potions to beat the Act 3 boss, even though they have massive health pools as well. Like now, you know, we had Donu Deca, so we had ways, double piercing well in Malaise, can stall enough while we get some poison going and suddenly we've stacked the poison up enough that it's going to die to corpse explosion and we slip our way through the fight. Maybe there was a potion that helped us do that. Definitely felt possible. These relics were good though is like the other thing, you know. This treasure chest gave us these. And then Wheel of Change gave us Kunai. Bronze Scales is a good relic. Anchor is a good relic. Hmm. Okay, um, geez, this has been some lengthy post-game analysis. You all have probably taken off by now, but if you've sat through this whole run and my droning on after the run, uh, you're awesome. I appreciate it. Consider subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next video.